I know, I know, nobody wants to talk about AI in the browser, but hear me out. This one's actually cool. I know that because I had no intention to talk about this feature, but then I saw this tweet from Guillermo, and now we have to chat because Chrome is adding a window.ai API, which is a Gemini Nano AI model, which is right inside of your browser. If you don't know this about AI, running things through like chat GPT is expensive, like can be very expensive. I've talked to AI companies that are spending 10 times more on using things like chat GPT than they are making from their customers. It's insane. It's horrifying how expensive the infrastructure for these things is because a bunch of GPU servers running full throttle doing all sorts of shit. And now you have a model just built into the browser. Well, it depends on the browser because when I click the link, uh, yeah, <laughs> Arc isn't modern enough, I guess. So we're gonna open Chrome. If you guys ever wonder how much I work for my videos, I'm installing a canary version of a browser I don't even like using. Okay, I'm a Chrome defender, I'm not gonna lie, but you get the idea. Now you have Chrome Canary. Supposedly the API might change like entirely, but as of now, if you've enabled this flag, it enables the exploratory prompt AI, allowing for you to send natural language instructions to a built-in LLM, which is Gemini Nano. Exploratory APIs are designed for local prototyping to help discover potential use cases and may never launch. These explorations will inform the built-in AI roadmap. We'll relaunch, and now after all of these things, we should theoretically, apparently I have to do more flags. I just installed Canary. <laughs> the Canary was 128. This is a feature on 127. So we thought we might have to go back a version, which is why I'm trying beta. I, I guess we'll try the dev channel. Chrome dev. I literally have every version of Chrome installed right now. Regardless of how this ends up, know that I suffered greatly. I should go add Chromium as well, just for shits. We got it. The dev version of Chrome appears to have this work. What am I doing with my life? Okay, we did it. After... Far too much work. We are now able to use AI built into Chrome. Why is it so hard to turn on the flags for Chrome's new window.ai feature? Great first question to ask it. Great answer. This model is very good. <laughs> yeah. Who won the Super Bowl in 2005? Cool. I'm gonna do something really stupid. So now my laptop's offline. Who won the Super Bowl in 2006? I forgot it was the Patriots again. I don't care about football. Who won the World Series in 2009? Isn't that cool? Like, I know this might seem silly, but the fact that this is built into the browser and it might be a standard that everyone has in their browser in the future means that if you're on a mobile phone with a spotty internet connection or you're on an airplane on your computer, I'm offline right now, like test search. I'm fully offline right now and this app is still working. I don't know how big the model I downloaded is because even getting it to download was miserable and I just don't, I don't have an easy way to check it, but it works and it's part of Chrome. And there's a future where we all just have this built in and I wanna play with it. I really wanna play with it. So we're gonna turn my Wi-Fi back on so I can actually do things. We're going to grab the repo for this project from Vercel. Let's take a look at how we use the Chrome AI code in here because that's where the interesting things are. Const text stream equals await stream text model Chrome AI prompt new message. So this is using the Vercel AI SDK, which if you're not familiar with it already, it's one of the better ways to do AI stuff in the browser. The, where is the stream? Yeah, it's coming from AI. Vercel actually snagged the AI package on NPM, which is just kind of hilarious. Anyways, streaming this in seems pretty easy. But I kind of want to just play with it in the browser because theoretically we can just call window.ai and do things with it. And I want to do that. Well, let's start by reading what they have to say first. Maybe there's some useful stuff in here. Almost certainly not, but I'll give them a shot. When we build features with AI models on the web, we often rely on server-side solutions for larger models. This is especially true for generative AI, where even the smallest models are about a thousand times bigger than the median web page size. It's also true for other AI use cases, where models can range from tens to hundreds of megabytes. Oh, they actually touched the thing I was about to say. These models aren't shared across websites. Chrome doesn't really let you share resources across different sites that are on different domains. There was a dream that we had back in the day that if we all source things from the same place, like uh, Skypack, for example, Skypack was meant to be a CDN for node modules. The goal here is to make it so you don't have to install every module. You can just get them via a script tag from someone else's CDN. The benefit here, theoretically, would be that if three websites were all using version 10.5 of Preact, then you'd only need to have it saved on your computer once 
and then all the other websites you go to would just reference the same cached bundle. There was an unexpected problem here, though. The issue is that this makes your browser trackable. How? Well, if you have unique bundles that you're putting onto different websites, you can track how long it takes to load it. So you know if somebody's been to another page before or not, based on whether or not a given JS file is in their cache. So there's effectively no way to set up caching of assets across different websites without making the web much easier to trace users on. So Chrome quickly rolled back the idea of letting multiple websites reference the same cached file for a JavaScript tag, which was the right call, but it sucks because now there's literally no reason to use a CDN for your stuff if you could just put it in your own CDN. Like using an external source for your JavaScript is suicide because we can't share these things across sites. Now imagine if instead of a 20 kilobyte JS file, this was a gigantic 200 plus megabyte model. If two websites use that, that's 400 megs. If five websites you go to use that, you now have a gig of storage that's like five sixth redundant. The fact that you can't really reasonably embed a model on the browser without slowly massively blowing up the amount of storage being wasted on these devices means that websites embedding their own models makes almost no sense. But what if there was one model that was shared in the browser and it was shared with an API built into the browser? That's why this is interesting because we can't share the models across websites. The only place to put it's in the browser, which is why I actually think this could be a good idea. While server-side AI is a great option for large models, on-device and hybrid approaches have their own compelling upsides. To make these approaches viable, we need to address the model size and delivery problem. That's why we're developing the web platform APIs and browser features designed to integrate AI models, including LLMs, directly into the browser. This includes Gemini Nano, the most efficient version of the Gemini family of LLMs designed to run locally on most modern desktop and laptop computers. Built in AI, your website or web apps can perform AI-powered tasks without needing to deploy or manage its own AI models, which also means using the user's CPU power, not your own. I was hoping they would have actual documentation. Is there really no documentation of this feature at all? Yeah, I just have to figure this out myself at this point. Const session equals AI dot create text session. I don't even know what options it takes. Session dot. I don't even know what to do with this. Const working equals await. Working has execute and prompt. Nice. What is the square root of pi? Okay, that's not too bad. I was expecting that to be worse. Cool. The code to actually use this is quite simple. I can prove that by opening up a very, very simple code base. Bun x create vite at latest. Okay, we're going to get a lot of TypeScript errors as I work on this. So I'm going to ask everyone watching, please ignore those. I want to show how simple this is to do. So we're going to make a function. We're not going to have real inputs or anything. Just want to showcase. So in here, first off, needs to be async. And we will const session equals await window dot AI dot. No, nope. it's as I said, TypeScript's going to be real mad at us because all these things are still new and not official. AI dot create text session. Return await. Oh, look at that. It actually knew about session dot prompt. So now we have an example. I will quickly add a dumb on click here. Delete all the contents here. Button on click equals, we'll fill that out in a second, prompt. So instead of returning, I'll just do the result assignment here. I'll call do prompt and I'll just log the result so we know this is working. Console.log result. Cool. If I run this in dev, which we already are, open up the console so we can actually see the results. Look at that. It's that simple. And if we want it, take an actual input, we can do that too. A lot of ways to do that. I'm going to do it the, the wrong, but also very React way. Oh, it's actually autocomplete that correct. Cool. We'll add state for const prompt set prompt. And now down here. Nice. And we can change the on click to do prompt with the current prompt. It doesn't take an input yet, so I'll do that. And that's it. If we want to actually do something with it, which we probably should return result, I'll have another use state here. That's const result set result. And now below result. Perfect. We'll define this properly. So we get the result const response equals await and then set result to response. Theoretically, now I can put a new prompt in here like uh, who is the best tech YouTuber hit prompt. Execution yielded a bad response. Who won the Super Bowl in 2001? Prompt. 
Cool. So I struggled with the subjective question, but at least we got an answer for that. But how cool is it that we can, without running any infrastructure or services, like I can turn my Wi-Fi off again, and that's all the code it takes to make an AI app. You create the session, you create the result, and you return the result. Pretty great. This is actually kind of cooler than I expected. The idea that you could demo and play with AI functionality just in the browser, and eventually this will exist in most browsers to some level. Okay, that, that was a funny comment from chat. Uh, is this the new to-do app? It kind of feels like it. But yeah, I did not think this would be that cool. I'm actually pretty hyped. The idea that you could somewhat trivially build a chat app anywhere <laughs> is dope. So knowing the docs aren't anywhere near ready yet and that we had to reverse engineer all of this and that only the specific dev version of Chrome happens to support this feature right now. But we're getting there. And I'm actually kind of excited about this. So uh, yeah, I want to highlight something important about the model that's baked into Chrome here. It's Gemini. So Gemini is not the best model, and I got a suggestion for a prompt to highlight how weird it is. Who is he? It's still using the local model, but it's not referencing anything. Why does it think that we are looking at a picture of Albert Einstein? What is the woman doing? Describe this picture to me. <laughs> They're all wearing casual clothing, and the background is dark and undefined. <laughs> oh my god. What language does this web page use? Programming languages does he use? Okay, for the first time, it actually says it does not have enough context. Uh, describe this. <laughs> okay, this model might not be ready for doing real things with. I, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And until next time, peace nerds.